The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, the first chart that I've posted into the den today for Tiger TV is the chart of uh, Priceline. And as you can see, we had a $135 move, which is a little more than 10%. Uh, on that stock after the earnings came out the part part of the problem is uh, getting that stock to sell it short many of the firms uh, don't even have enough quantities uh, in stock in other words when you sell a stock the firm has to have it that they can borrow it to you to sell it and uh, that that doesn't happen on some um, some platforms. It's a little more difficult, but um, as you can see, 100 100 bucks a share is uh, is pretty good. Anyway, that's what's happened with uh, with the stock, and we're we should have a lot of resistance uh, up around that um, 1275 level, which is the 61 percent retracement uh, of the whole move. Now, getting down to the real market here, we've been up uh, very strongly now since um, February the uh, 9th. When we at uh, ninth and tenth, when we made that bottom, we're now up. Uh, well, we're up five uh, tra five trading days, I believe. And as you can see here, last night, uh, uh, well, yesterday sell off in the Dow. We we backed off a hundred hundred points, which was a perfect A B C D pattern. And then um, the la during last night, uh, you you notice that the Dow went 150 points higher from that low which was an exact 1.27 expansion. And so far, uh, early this morning, we've backed off to just about the 50% retracement of that. This is the first sign that we are running into just a little bit of resistance. The uh, market's getting a little tired on the upside. So uh, something that uh, just to keep in mind here, you know, if you see a nice little pattern, either buy or sell, you know, uh, make sure you use a stop. Uh, that's the that's the key, you know, to looking at these things. That's the main thing. Now, if we look at the um, if we look at the Dow, uh, e, let's not call it the Dow E mini. If we look at the E mini, and let's hopefully I can find it. Oh dear, let's not let's not go there yet. <laughs> I think I've lost it already. Anyway, the E mini S and P uh, did not quite um, take out that 1.27. It missed it by about five points. It should have got up to around the 11. 40 level, which we might get that uh, later today. Longer term, folks, something big, something big has really happened uh, in the stock market. We said that uh, last week when we had those big A, B, C, D patterns um, forming in the New York Stock Exchange Index. Okay, we've got a caller from uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Donald, are you there? Yes, Larry. How are you today? I am very good, thank you. Good. Hey, got a got a question. I'm looking uh, I'm looking at some uh, patterns on the uh, S and P, Nasdaq, and uh, Dow in relation to the triple Qs. As far as uh, head and shoulders tops are concerned, it seems like the three indices has, have already made it. But looking at the Qs, it looks like the Qs are going for the uh, right shoulder now. Uh, can you can you take a look at that and let me know if uh, I'm I'm on. On that one? Well, I think you are, but we haven't rallied enough to really tell us if that right shoulder is going to be a shoulder or not. It's got to get at least to a 382 retracement, and we're not even close to that yet, Donald. Uh, I think we're going to because of the strength that we had, you know, coming out of here. So that's what it looks like. Uh, that's what it looks like to me. What do you see for an ex a D expansion uh, to going up to make that right shoulder on the Qs? I, on the Qs, I, I'm not sure the exact price on the Qs because I, I don't get involved with them very much. I mainly do the uh, S&P uh, 500, and then I do the Dow. But the reason why I don't do the NASDAQ is because it's so skewed by those eight stocks that are in there. And, you know, if you're going to do the NASDAQ, you have to look at all eight of those stocks to see which one is, uh, you know, 
playing the violin that day. So if you look at the New York Stock Exchange Index, and if you look at the uh, S&P 500, we really need the S&P 500 to get up about another uh, 70 or 80 pips for that to be um, ticks in order to uh, to get it to be uh, you know spot on. That's around around 1980 uh, in the S&P, and that would put the Dow Jones. Uh, back to the 17,000 mark uh, one more time, about another uh, 550 points from, from where it is right now. I don't think it'll get there uh, overnight, but this next uh, little sell-off that we get, and, and we haven't had one. We've only had a 20%, a 20, a two-point correction since we bottomed, uh, you know, a week ago Thursday. So uh, it's still, you know, real early in the game. But something big has happened. I, I don't think uh, technically you can't... Uh, can't uh, write that off because we made all those A, B, C, D patterns down there in uh, in February, uh, on February 9th and 10th, and uh, and now we've come out of here really strong, and that tells you that there was some kind of cycle there that is very important. Well, actually, yes. Now that you mentioned the cycle, uh, I'm you know you're saying it's going to take a little while to uh, make that right shoulder. I did a little uh, research on your astrology just pulled up a uh, quick page and uh, I see we got some uh, activity on March 8th and March 9th uh, Jupiter at uh, opposition with the earth uh, new moon and a total solar eclipse uh, going oh on. yes that that that'll certainly <laughs> that'll certainly be a, a dandy you'll get a lot of activity around those um, one of the things that we look at of course uh, is the uh, you know the Bradley model and uh, many times you know we blow it up in other words, make a look at like it at a micro view instead of a macro view to try to get a, a pretty good idea of what's happening. And, and and what I think has happened is is we've had some type of an inversion here uh, on February the uh, the eighth or ninth, somewhere in that ballpark. And then uh, what looks like to me that uh, we're going to be making a high into that March 8th. That's what it looks like, you know, very, very, it's, at least it's clear to me. I mean, it might be as clear as mud, but that's what it looks, that's what it looks like. So, you know, that, that's the problem with the, with the, with the astrology part, um, Donald, is that you have so many permutations to look at. You've got the speed of the planets. You've got the uh, the, the, re the relative mass of the planets, all these things. I'm absolutely 100% sure that astrology has some great benefit here because all of the major, major bottoms in the market and most of the tops, all of the major bottoms, every single one of them that, that we went back through 1875, uh, all of them, uh, occur when we have these massive oppositions and conjunctions uh, coming together. And um, I, know, I know the one in uh, 2009 certainly was a major, Oh, yeah, 2009 was a big one, but the bigger ones were the ones in 1974. We had double ones. We had one in October, and then again we had another one in December because the, the, all of the planets were in retrograde motion at that time, and they were switching. And so you had a bottom in October, which was the October crash, and then you had the double bottom uh, in December. And then you didn't get another one until August the 9th of 1982, and then you got another one in 1987, and then you got another one in 2000, and then if you go back even farther, you had 1954, I mean, 1932, I mean, all of them have all these same characteristics, so the cycles are there. The problem is they shift uh, because of the shorter ones can come in and, uh, you know, mess Anything things up. Anything like that going forward? Yes, stay, stay with us, Donald. We have to pay a few bills here. Stay with us, please. Okay, yes. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed 
that has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Folks, with Donald from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, we were talking about uh, astrology, and I was mentioning, uh, Donald, that the um, the problem is there's just so many permutations that you have when you're looking at the different planets. You know, you've got the orbs, the speeds, the you know, the mass of the planets, and the energy, and all those things. And what you try to do is to put it together in a way that gives you a little bit of an edge, and that's what it is—a little bit of an edge. The patterns are what lead you to the promised land, and they're they're the they're the reasons why astrology works. I don't know which came first, the chicken or the egg, but it's all related to that spiral, you know, of the Fibonacci summation sequence of how things move around. That's my opinion, of course, and and I can certainly listen to other opinions, but uh, over the years, that's what I found uh, works uh, works best for me. But don't give up studying this stuff because uh, you might find something in there that's a real gem, as other people have had have found. Can you recommend a website to uh, access? Well, I think the best the best way would be to uh, you know look at the work of uh, both uh, Norm um, Winsky from Astro Trends. Um, you know, WWW Astro Trends. He's got a terrific course uh, on that. And then uh, Shane Smolian from Wolf Trader. Uh, he's on to some really exciting things on the speeds of the planets. That was the work that was done by uh, George Baer, you know, back in the 20s and 30s. But I'd start out with the basics. Uh, I would start out with Norm and, uh, you know, get a fair idea. Norm is a, a really an experienced trader uh, and also an experienced astrologer who's, you know, he bought Evangeline Adams' uh, a library, which was, uh, she was the astrologer for J.P. Morgan, so she would say no more. I mean, he certainly got the experience and the, and the resources for it, so... Uh, and he, he's been on our show many times, and you know he's been spot on. So uh, I would I would certainly start out there. That would be a, a good way to to start learning it. 
Okay, and just a last follow-up question. Do you see any uh, major astrology, uh, uh, you know, lineups uh, occurring in the future for uh, a possible bottom going forward? Well, well, we've had it. We had a pretty good bottom. We had a pretty good bottom in here uh, on the tenth. The question is, what's going to happen in two weeks when we come into March, March the eighth? Now, if you if you let me hope and pray a little bit, I'm hoping and praying that we go up into that March eighth. Uh, aspect because that would be an ideal situation because you'd be rallying for uh, almost it would be exactly one month you'd be coming into the lunar aspect with an eclipse and then some large planetary things which means your Bradley indicator will be turning so that's the key date to look at is that March 8th period gotcha okay excellent Excellent. Thanks hey, so listen, much, Harrisburg is where Andrew Carnegie had his steel plant back in the 1800s wasn't it uh, I think it was, yes. Yeah, I remember they had a big strike there, and nine people were killed many years ago because they wouldn't work 18-hour days. <laughs> Some people now don't want to work 18-hour weeks. <laughs> Listen, thanks for calling in, Donald. I certainly appreciate it. You betcha, Larry. I enjoy your show. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Okay, boys and girls, we have an early Christmas present today. We have... Priceline Charlie on the line from La Paz, Mexico. Charlie, are you there? Yes, I am. Tell me what's happening. Where are we standing with uh, with Priceline? Well, last night I had a bad time. I was in jail. The policia came in and said that some guy, Larry Presidente, said that I gotta get make a get out of jail call or I'm in jail. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll I'll send the bounty hunters out for you, Charlie. <laughs> okay. I, I actually was activating the solar system yesterday, and when we're dealing with 10 panels, putting out 460 volts, 10 amps, that's about 4,600 watts, I didn't want to have anybody killed, so I stayed, watched every moment of it. It went well. Well, that's good. You certainly want to yes. do that. Well, what are you going to do with Priceline? Are you going to be looking to sell it again, or what's, what's, your, what is your, uh, what's your strategy? As you know, I only short, and you guided me carefully, and you said, when we got under, uh, under 1,000, I was really concerned because I went from 1,400, 1,300, mm -hmm. where I was buy, uh, selling it, and then I bought back at starting at 1,040, and my best buyback covering was at 9.59. Wow. But then I know I've, that's because you. You said no. What do you, did you say? You always say um, when they're selling, when they're yelling, Buy them when they're selling. crying and sell them when, when they're yelling. That's correct. <laughs> exactly. And that's what I did. You know, they were really crying, and I was buying. But now I still haven't shorted. Every mm -hmm. time Priceline uh, has a big movement, like we are seeing right now, they move between 2% to 7% a day after the earnings. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably, I'm probably going to watch today how it approaches the 1250 mark and if it goes above it that's when i'm going to make a decision if i'm going to start shorting again hmm. and recognize well, keep an eye on keep an eye on 1275 that's the 61 percent retracement of the of the whole move down we've got that big gap in there but that that stock gaps a lot anyway so right be okay and, 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 and you know it's really i found that when you're under the 200 day moving average where we were we're coming back to retest, and I find that's usually my best place to short right at the 1,200 day and see if it goes up a little bit, turns around, and goes down below. If it heads down below the 12, the 12, the 200 day moving average, which in this case should be around uh, 1225, I think somewhere in that range, then it's a big short. To me, this is where I'm going to, you know, just load up and hope for the best. No, that sounds good. Well, we, we really enjoy hearing from you. We we tried to reach you uh, on Tuesday's show, but we were unable to. But everybody was asking about you. We had the Mexican state police looking for you, but evidently they tracked you down. And we certainly want to thank you for calling in. But if you believe that story, I got another thing next to you. Do you know the guy next to me it was a guy named El Capo, and he was digging tunnel. He kept me up all night. Oh, he did, <laughs> huh, with the, with the scraping? <laughs> <laughs> He'll probably be digging through through your area very soon. He'll be out of there again, I'm sure of that, because money talks, yeah. as you know, as well as I do. Mm -hmm. Well, That's listen, true. thank you for calling in, Charlie. We certainly appreciate it, my friend. It's been my pleasure, and it's always a pleasure listening to you. You're the best. 
Thank oh, you. Well, thank, thank you very much. Okay, that was Priceline Charlie of La Paz, Mexico, our, our uh, specialist on the stock of uh, Priceline. Okay, now I wanted to talk just a little bit about some information. Uh, this is going to be sort of difficult to see here. I'm, there, it's pretty good. But this is basically from the Federal Reserve, uh, and it basically it shows what's happened to banks uh, over the last four decades. Basically, we're down to the point now where four banks have basically consolidated uh, most of the banking in the United States. Citigroup, J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo. They basically have a monopoly. Well, it's called an ogol oligopoly when you have three or four of them running the whole show, much like we had with the auto industry for years. But um, I think this will all shake out a little bit later on when this quantitative easing begins to uh, uh, rock and roll, which we'll probably see that, uh, you know, down the, down the road a little bit. So anyway, this is very interesting, the fact that all of these things have been, um, you know, consolidated, and then they, they charge you for absolutely everything now. It's really, uh, really amazing. Okay, we're going to take a little break. 877-927-6648. Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, we're back, folks. We've had a couple of questions here. Uh, one is about the uh, dollar-yen uh, chart, and I'm going to have that up in just a little bit. i have uh, getting preparing it right now. It's going to have too many lines on it, but it's pretty much going to be uh, interesting uh, if it's going to be uh, if it's going to be correct here, but I did wanted to show you folks the relationship between the dollar yen because they do move uh, with a very high correlation and has to do. I still think it has to do with the carry trade, but that shouldn't make any difference now because there's no interest rates. Uh, in uh, in Japan, so the carry trade is no good. What they used to do is to borrow the yen, and it was paying like two percent, and um, you know they never figured they'd never pay it back anyway. But it was at a less rate than the um, than the going rates, and so you were able to use that money as leverage, as as I understand it. That's a little beyond my pay rate pay grade. I'm I'm just a pattern recognition swing trader, folks. I I'm not really understanding a lot of the things about the fundamentals that they bring across the board. When I started trading, there were only 22 things to trade in the commodity markets. Uh, that was way back in uh, the middle of this last century. But um, it's really uh, it's really come a long way now. There's, uh, I think, 280,000 different things that you can trade using spreads. And, uh, and that's not counting the ones that are off the books where people make up their own trades like they do at Goldman Sachs and other places where they put portfolios together in order to give the the wonderful customers a chance to make a you know a huge uh, a huge profit so we'll wait and see how this all uh, turns out over the months but it doesn't it won't it will not end good i'm i'm almost sure of that the $64 question is is how badly is it's going to end. That is uh, that is indeed the bottom line. Now, I wanted to share with you uh, one of the reasons why I think we're ready for a little bit of a correction. And we're going to go across the pond here over to uh, Hong Kong, where Mr. Logan is uh, is tonight. Glad to see he made it okay. Hope we can get out of the town without a hospital visit like he usually does when he's in Asia. Sorry, John. It happens one time. It happens every time. You'll notice this Hang Seng uh, chart. Uh, we made the butterfly bottom down there on the uh, 11th of February, which was uh, during that time of the uh, the lunar um, holiday, the uh, the uh, the new moon. And then also, you noticed last night, we rallied up to the exact 786 at 19,450, and we closed about 150 points below it in the lower end of the range. That's a pretty pretty good cor uh, sizable correction uh, intraday, and the fact that we hit that 786 tells us that this market is ready to, you know, to back off and try to find uh, some support uh, on the downside. And this will be the big key, is what happens over the weekend and uh, into our first correction and then after we have that first correction then we'll have a pretty good idea of whether we are going to go higher into uh, March the 8th or this is the dead cat bounce that uh, people have uh, talked about and I, I believe uh, very strongly that we are going to uh, you know go uh, a lot higher uh, but the question is, you know, we've gone from we rallied 100. Can you believe it? we went with 125 S&P points in five days? That's a that's a lot. Now, we're backing off a little bit this morning. And as uh, as John mentioned in his profile, there should be some really strong support around that uh, 1918 to 1900 level uh, in the S and P, and I, I certainly uh, I certainly uh, understand that. The last significant correction we had in the S and P was 23 points. We went from 1893. And then we backed off to 1870, and from 1870 we went up and we completed a, a move up around that 1.27 at 19, uh, 1936. And so what we're looking for now is probably a 20-point move down uh, in the S&P, and that would see if it's going 20 to 30-point move. Uh, we actually got to 33, not to 36. But uh, the key level to watch from yesterday's range that we looked at in the uh, in the S and P, especially in the early morning, is to watch how it handles the uh, 1920 level, because that'll be a 786 retracement of the overnight range, and that's usually pretty good. However, the safer one is if you can get a move down to 1912, 
that's the one that would have more of an effect on the markets than anything else. And the reason for that is, is that it would be a 382 retracement of that move we had from 1873, and that will give us a better, better spot to look at. So we're going to focus on 1912. Actually, the range is between 1912 and 1906 is what I would be watching uh, for today. We'll uh, we'll keep an eye on uh, we'll keep an eye on what that's going to do. But the first tip off, I believe, was the Hang Seng Index uh, doing what it was doing. Also, the German DAX also had a very interesting pattern. Uh, it actually had made a 382 retracement um, during the time we got down to 1873 in the S&P, but. Uh, and now the DAX has started to sell off a little bit after being, you know, quite strong, you know, early in the morning. Now, the whether this is going to cause much of a rally in the bond market, I'm not sure. But the bonds are just flat out bearish uh, longer term. There's just no other way uh, that you can... Uh, uh, figure that out. Other than when you look at that long-term pattern, it's just uh, we should put that in or let the folks see it, because it has got a uh, really big, uh, huge butterfly up there, along with the uh, shooting star pattern, and uh, it really makes it very interesting. Uh, someone's asked me the question: What are the harmonic numbers in the S and P? The harmonic numbers in the S and P have never changed since it started trading back in April, um, the 16th of 1982. The harmonic numbers are 5.5 and 3.5. Now, that's on a shorter term time. You're talking two and four minute charts. But if you expand that out, you just multiply it by two, three, four, five, or six, and you'll get the harmonic number. In other words, six times, you know, five. 50 will take you to, you know, 31 points, and it'll shift back and forth based on the volatility of the market. But if you went back and looked at all the swings, and you'll see that most of the swings are between 5.5 points and 3.5 points. That's still true to this day. And, uh, you know, years ago, 5.5 points was a lot of money because when we first started trading the S&P back in April and there was virtually nobody in the pit at that time they had to pull people into the pit to get them to do any business but by July things had started to perk up and then in August when it was making its bottom the S&P was trading at uh, I believe 102 in the cash market as opposed to where we are now at 19 and change uh, it was uh, there. Were a few there were a few more people in the pit, but it didn't get really popular until um, the Dow took out 1,100 uh, 1,100 in the Dow in 1983. Then the S and P became a very very uh, uh, frequently it was well. Was just, let's just, there was a lot of trading going on. Many traders started coming into the pit, and uh, at that time. I can remember because it was a breakout day, and I was taking, uh, I took a taxi every morning from the McClure Court there over on the Lakeshore Drive over to the Merck, and then at the end of the day, I always took the bus home because it was, uh, they dropped me off right in front of my building, and it was real easy, and the bus was empty, and I saved $3, which was good. However, I'll finish this story after the break, 877-927-6648. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. 
It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we were talking about the Dow Jones back in 1983. It was breaking out above the uh, 1,100 mark, as I recall. It hadn't taken that uh, out. Uh, that was the highest move that we had had uh, since, I believe, 1968. So it had been like 16 years it had been in this really tight uh, trading range and as we were as I was going to work that morning I looked up at the Chicago Board of Trade there on LaSalle Street and I saw the giant sign that said the 138th anniversary of the Chicago Board of Trade and here I was looking at that S&P on the charts at that level and I said boy this must really mean something and, and sure it did uh, as the market you know continued to go higher uh, we went up into uh, 19 um, 87 on the 25th of July of August that year we had harmonic convergence which were five planets all at zero degrees they were all at conjunction uh, we had a new moon all of the planets were in the sign of Leo which is the you know Leo the lion roaring lion and of course that was the high and then the market broke down into October 19th of that year being the greatest buying opportunity uh, in probably the history of the world. But boy, listen, folks, you really had to uh, have some uh, uh, some type of a seance to see that coming because, boy, it was scary. It was uh, one of the scary, well, not a question. It was the most scariest time I've ever seen in all the markets that I've seen uh, over the years. And, you know, I don't know if we're going to live through another crash like that or not. Usually you get one every generation. That probably was ours. So I don't know whether we'll see it. We will see some, you know, bear markets, of course. But whether we see a crash or not, you know, and a crash is when you, when you drop something like 10 to 15 percent in one day. You know, there, therein lies uh, where they hurt a lot of people. You can see what's happened to um, uh, China. You know, they had a, a big move down, but it certainly wasn't a crash. I think the worst days they had were like 6 or 7%, but they didn't wipe out everybody in a matter of, uh, you know, a few days. That's, uh, you know, that doesn't happen, you know, that often for sure. Now, I wanted to, uh, someone's asked me a question about the, um, you give me a second here. I wanted to bring up the German DAX here to show you this pattern that we're seeing here in the German DAX, and you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to see this ABCD pattern that I've been uh, talking about. 
this morning, and we'll just quickly pull it up and take a look at it. Now, the DAX is basically the same thing as our uh, S&P 500. Uh, it is, um, you know, very heavily traded. Uh, it follows the ABCD structure, as you can see. I've marked some of them in there uh, to show you. But we're almost we're at a 382 retracement of the high we made early in the year in January. And we're, we are completing an ABCD pattern. And it's basically you're looking at a five trading day rally off of the bottom of uh, February the 11th. So this is where you would normally expect, you know, your first uh, correction. We did have a correction uh, into the uh, morning of the 17th, which was a 382 correction uh, spot on when it was trading at uh, 9069. And then we've rallied um, almost, well, we've rallied 500 points up to this uh, 9,500 level. So that's another reason why I think the market's getting ready to uh, to go a little lower. There, there should, like I mentioned earlier, I'm expecting support to come in between 1912 and 1908. 1908 would be the most logical one. And the reason for that is it's a 1.618 expansion of the last move that we had to the upside, plus it's going to be uh, down the same as we did the last time on the way down. That would be down 23 points uh, from the high we made at 1893. We went to 1870. This would be equal to that. So that brings you in at 1908. So I'm looking at 1908, 1909. And oh, let's try that again. It's 1907. 1907 is the number that I'm looking at uh, uh, for some support to come in. If we break below the 1907, then the correction has certainly started and we could get, you know, a couple more days down. But, you know, it's just the thing looks really bullish on the longer term daily charts. And folks, you've been listening to me here for since May of last year. I've been really bearish. Uh, up until a week ago, Friday, uh, when we had that big move down in the reversal, uh, all of those thing, all of those patterns that I look at hit a major A B C D patterns. And when I see that, I throw the astrology out the window and everything else, and say, hey, this is something that's really important because uh, that's the major pattern that is there, and uh, that's what you really want to be looking at. But uh, we have some small signs today. That's all it is of a correction coming. You know, if you're a long-term trader, you're not even you're not even concerned, you know, with anything uh, like this. Um, let's uh, talk a little bit about the gold market. Be wow, I can't believe the time has gone so fast. Wow. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the gold market. We topped here uh, last week at uh, 1262. We broke 70 some dollars uh, right away. We went down to 1091. Let's try that again, 1191. And you know, folks, it hasn't broken any more uh, than that. That's a, that's actually a good sign if you're long-term bullish uh, on gold. What we want to do is we want to see the first correction back uh, in the gold market. And what we're expecting there is a move up into that 1222 to 12. Uh, 27 lower area that would be uh, 34 dollars and the, the harmonic number in gold is somewhere between 34 and 36 dollars i believe it's 34 the number in silver is 36 but that would take you right up into that area and that would be a uh, 50 percent retracement of the move down from the 1262 actually it's a 38 percent retracement of the move down from the uh uh, no, it is 50%. Yep, yeah, it is 50% retracement back into that 1224 to 1227 level. So that's what I'm watching uh, in the gold market. You know, that's uh, you know what I think is a is a pretty good one to look at. Uh, we're going to have to take a little break here, but also I want to cover the corn because we're we're getting ready here in corn, folks, for something uh, to happen here. I don't know when it's going to happen, but we are into some real cycle stuff here uh, coming into uh, uh, March. Right Right around that time, uh, March the 8th, when we have the uh, eclipse and the uh, new moon, it will be really interesting to see, you know, what happens at that time. But I wanted to put this in here just to show you that we want to get ready for this. Because if you remember uh, last May, uh, we had an incredible setup uh, in soybeans where we had several uh, all patterns coming together with price and time, uh, equal Gartleys that had uh, repeated over and over again. The timing was uh, just absolutely, you know, spot on for the Memorial Day weekend, and the market uh, proceeded to rally, 
you know, well over a dollar and a half a bushel in beans and, and also a uh, dollar in corn. And so those are huge moves when you consider the margin on corn is, you know, roughly $2,500. Uh, and so it can have a tremendous amount of, um, you know, leverage to you if you handle it correctly. And what you want to do is always protect yourself. Remember that the first mistake teaches you, the second mistake kills. Those are the words of uh, Roy Longstreet. You know, you can always make a mistake, and if you correct it, it's no problem. But if you don't correct the mistake, you know, there's where your problem lies. And this happens with our children, too, folks. You see a child doing something right, and you don't uh, do anything about it. Basically, what you're doing is you're rewarding that child for bad behavior. Not a good thing. Meep, meep, meep. Judge is ruling. <sighs> I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we are in the midst of the first half hour of trading. Um, we have a... Um, situation now someone's asked me a question i don't know if it's a situation but they asked me how i came up with that number of uh, 1907 uh, 1908 in the s p basically if you look at what happened previously the market backed off uh, 23 points from its high 
back in 1893, we backed off to 1870, that would be the same type of a pullback. And that will also be setting at a 1.618 expansion of the intraday move that occurred yesterday from the low to the high, because we did get a sell-off of over 100 Dow points, uh, which was 12 S&P points. And so if you multiply that out, that takes you down to that level of 1907. Now, failing 1907, then there's a real problem, because 1907 is really where the wagons have been circled from the bullish camp. From a shorter-term uh, time frame, remember, longer term, we went from 19, excuse me, 1802 to uh, 1933. You know, we rallied 130 handles. So even a 30% retracement uh, uh, off of that is uh, is going to be 50 points so that's not a you know that's not a big deal so um, you know that's you know what you're looking at is when you try to you know time these things on an intraday basis so that's the main thing um, getting back to the gold I said another question on the gold market uh, the, the the 1226 level 1222 to 1226 is the key level to watch and if we get a strong move uh, above that level in other words with a really good move up you know 15 20 dollars on gold closing you know above 1230 1235 somewhere that then the whole thing is changed because that $70 break in gold happened in a matter of hours uh, between Sunday and Monday. And that and being a holiday like it was, it could have been very thin. You could have had a, just a, an aberration. Silver's level uh, stopped pretty pretty much right on spot, uh, target at that 15, uh, 20 level per ounce. So it's the same situation. Uh, we did not break down continuously. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.